But happening now, dozens of mourners are gathering at the spot where an Escondido woman on her way home from church last night was killed, the innocent victim of a gang shooting. Our tenders reporter Steve Fiorina is live and Steve, lots of neighbors who didn't even know her, they're feeling the pain tonight. The neighborhood here says they have been kind of under siege for a long time, as you see over my shoulder. There are some people who are singing. There have been there was a, a short little prayer session here a few moments ago. A lot of people from the neighborhood feeling the impact of that shooting and the death of that woman last night. Kathy Kennedy's Camry crashed into a parked pickup truck seconds after the stray bullet struck her in the head. Driving home from Bible study class, she was caught in a gang shootout across East Grand Avenue. Neighbors and paramedics tried to save her, but she died later at the hospital. It's quiet today at the Church of St. Timothy, where she and her husband were involved in youth ministry. Some flowers dropped off at the dentist office where she worked. It's closed. Her picture on the counter inside, flowers at the front door. A patient of Kathy's dropped by to leave a card of condolence. At first, she could barely speak. She was a friend because I went, I've seen her many years with the dental hygienist. Julie had heard about the tragedy last night, never suspecting it was her friend. She's just a very, very sweet person with a wonderful family. Just a very nice lady. I, I, it's just shocking to see what happened. She said the dentist sent out an email with the heartbreaking news. I just feel so lost because she, she always, when, when you're working on your teeth, you get to know them, they chat with you. She, she talked about her daughter a lot and all her accomplishments and her husband. She just was a wonderful person. We're all gonna miss her a lot. We've heard nothing but kind words about her. We're hearing amazing grace now as the prayer vigil moves into the dark hours here tonight. Uh, most of these people are from the neighborhood. The police say they're wanting somebody to come forward with information. They have some videos taken right afterward. They're hoping something will turn up a lead who killed her. Live in Escondido, Steve Fury. Steve, thank you. A crime alert now. A man stabbed near the Embarcadero. His attacker is still on the loose tonight. This happened near the Marina Inn in Suites last night. Paramedics took the victim to the hospital. There is no word on his condition. Only on 10 News, sewage bubbling up from the ground and swamping the floor of an entire home. Cleanup still underway tonight. Reporter Michael Chen reveals the decision a local man says caused him a lot of heartache. Well, you can't smell it, but I can assure you that the smell coming out of that is not pleasant. As for the front door, there is an asbestos warning. Nobody's allowed inside without a lot of protective gear. The stuff bubbling up here is why. Around 7 p.m. more than a week ago, after a day of unrelenting rain at this home in Spring Valley. Oh, right here is where it started to bubble out. Michael Ramirez out of town got a call from his wife. She uh, just said that I hear the uh, toilet bubbling. Soon after, sewage poured out from underneath the toilet and the bathtub drain. I started getting upset. Ramirez says county crews showed up. Frustrated, a little overwhelmed. And told his wife the rains caused a nearby sewer line to back up by midnight. It's a horrible thing. The blockage still not fixed. The sewage swamping the entire home, even flowing from the kitchen cabinets. You just never expect anything like that to really just happen to you, and it just happened. This is what it looked like a few days later. All the carpet ripped out. County workers packed up all the family's belongings to be tested. This right here is just all that uh, left behind. Everything here was in the backyard. Everything inside. You, you feel distraught that that's it. It's all gone. This scene to me seems like it's lifted directly out of a horror film. Evan Walker is Ramirez's lawyer. So it shows that there's a continual problem with the state of the County of San Diego's infrastructure. This is a serious problem that needs to be addressed uh, immediately. Ramirez, who rents, has one big regret. He did not have renter's insurance on the day this happened. Yeah, it's a nightmare when your house turns into everybody's toilet. Michael Champ, 10 years. The Ramirez family says the county promised to put them up in a hotel, but that took a week to do it. The county not commenting on that, but it does say that the backup was due to the amount of rain and not a maintenance issue. All right, Kim, Brian Schlonsky here in the 10 News Live Center now with an update to breaking news we've been following since 10 News at 5 o'clock. That busted fire hydrant in City Heights. I do want to take you to some video from just a few minutes ago. The 10 News breaking news tracker shooting this as gallons of water flooded down Whiteman and Altadena Avenue there in City Heights. Here within the last few minutes, police 
and crews, fire all out there. They did manage to get this water turned off, so this finally did stop. A car ran into the hydrant. That's what caused all of this. We didn't see the water shooting straight up into the sky, but shooting there into the road as well. Take a listen to what neighbors said it looked and sounded like. Car came street, just driving around this um, this corner here. Uh, I was going kind of fast and um, lost control and hit the fire hydrant here. Lifted up the sidewalk a little bit and, and uh, we began to see just the water gushing. Well, you saw how high it was going into the tires there on some of the cars parked there on the street just within the last few minutes after they did get that water turned off. It looked like they were loading the car up onto some sort of a tow truck to get it out of there as well. Guys, back to you, Ryan. Thank you. All right, a developing story now. San Diego State searching for a new president tonight. Elliot Hirschman is resigning, ending a controversial six years of state marred with scenes like this. Students surrounded his car angry he didn't do more to stop hate speech, which was happening on campus. Our tennis uh, anchor Real Creighton is live on campus with how students are reacting to this resignation tonight. Real. Uh, Steve, uh, students here are very highly critical of this president. Thanks in part, as you mentioned, a very high profile protest. Imagine, if you will, the university president stuck in a car surrounded by students refusing to let him leave. The interactions with the community, opportunities of a diverse campus. President of San Diego State University, Elliot Hirschman, at one time talking diversity. After six years announcing he's stepping down as head of the university. For some students, six years of progress and problems. Hirschman, Hirschman, come on up. We have something to talk about. Our camera there with Hirschman in the back of a police cruiser in April of last year, surrounded by protesters. Really, Hirschman? Really, Hirschman? Really, Hirschman? Angry over his response to flyers and posters spread around campus accusing specific Muslim students of a connection to terrorism. In a statement, Hirschman connecting the posters to free speech, some outraged he didn't outright condemn them. I don't think he handled it very well. Senior Stephanie Morgan says for her that was enough. She hopes the next president is more responsive. If your students don't feel welcome here or want to go to school here, if they're getting targeted, then you're failing as a president, in my opinion. Few acknowledged Hirschman's successes, and there are many. Under his tenure, freshman graduation rates have nearly doubled, and SDSU has had a record surge in fundraising. Hirschman, one of the highest paid in the university system. His salary and benefits totaling nearly a half a million dollars. Students we talked to said they're ready for a fresh start. For all that money, I, I feel like there's a lot more that could have been done. Well, Hirschman is headed to Maryland to serve as president of uh, Stevenson University. His last day will be June 30th. We're live at SDSU tonight. Riel Creighton, 10 News. Thanks, Riel. And he leaves as one of Cal State System's highest paid presidents. Transparent California reports Hirschman's earnings at 492469 That was in 2015. And that is only a few hundred less than the highest paid president. That's Jeffrey Armstrong of Cal Poly Saint San Luis Obispo. And the lowest paid president is Robert Nelson. He is in charge of Cal State Northridge. He earned $202,000 back in 2015. All right, now to a developing story. A family demanding justice after this mother was killed in a hit and run crash. And now we have learned the driver has been deported five times. Sandra Duran died when someone slammed into her car in the San Fernando Valley last month. Police say the driver was Estuardo Alvarado, an undocumented immigrant with a criminal background. Duran's sister says he needs to get off the streets before he destroys another family. We want him put away for good. I want justice for my sister, you know, her, her life not to go in vain. According to ICE officials, Alvarado was most recently sent back to Mexico in 2011. Mm. And happening today, some local business owners shut their doors in honor of a day without a woman. Brian Bieber's own Simply Local, a marketplace filled with local businesses in North Park. Bieber says that he's glad he took a loss of customers today. There are 55 women-owned vendors inside his business. Five women operate the store every day. And Bieber says he jumped on board when his manager brought up the idea a few days ago. Immediately I understood the concept. She explained it to me and I said, that's what we're about. We're totally about that. So we're going to honor that by closing out the shop. I hope today uh, that kind of shows a little bit of the impact that it can have on the nation without women shopping, without women uh, coming to their schools and teaching. 
Beavers also encourages supporters to donate to the YWCA of San Diego, which empowers women to break the cycle of domestic violence and homelessness. All right, Kim, we are back in the 10 News Live Center and this just in. You may remember last year this. It was a violent clash at the state capitol here in California. It was a white nationalist rally there and it turned violent. There you go. You see some of the video of that right now. Police rushing in. Well, now police are saying that they want to charge 106 people who were involved in this. If you'll remember, this was a planned protest. About 30 members of the traditionalist worker party were there. They had a permit to rally and then 400 counter protesters showed up. This big fight broke out. 10 people taken to the hospital. There were knife attacks. You saw a bad attack there and now police want charges against more than 100 people. Back to you. Thank you, Brian. Well, this will tick you off. There is new video. It catches thieves targeting this elderly man. You see him tap him on the pocket there. The elderly man looks, but keep watching because he comes back, grabs the man by his pocket, drags that man down the sidewalk. Everybody else just watches, throws him to the ground, knocked him unconscious, and then searched his clothing for everything he had. This happened outside the man's apartment in downtown LA. Police hope releasing this video will remind everybody to be cautious of their surroundings.